It finally happened. We finally got the gameplay trailer for the upcoming FNAF game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. And I'm gonna be straight up right now. I think it's one of, if not the best trailer we've ever gotten for the entire FNAF franchise. So what we're gonna be doing in today's video is going through the entire trailer, taking a look at every single detail frame by frame. And I also have some bonus information coming from PlayStation, Steel Wall Studios, and also other references in the trailer that I wanna talk about. And of course, explain who the big baddie is at the end of the trailer, reaching out their claw. So if you're new here, thank you so much for coming out to the video. Please subscribe and smash the like button. Also, a little bit after this video goes up, I'll be doing a Twitch stream over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash johnnyblocks, and we'll be discussing our thoughts on the gameplay trailer a bit more, so I hope I can see you there. So yeah, let's start off by just going through the trailer, looking at every single detail. As per usual, I'm not going to have my face cam doing the analysis of the trailer just because I want to make sure you guys can see every single thing that I'm looking at so my camera isn't blocking any details. So the two minute long gameplay trailer starts off by a panning zoom into the Vanny mask that we see in Help wanted Curse of Dreadbear. Interesting that the mask made a return. I think we all thought that because Vanny now has a full-on rabbit suit, it wasn't going to be shown anymore. When I first found you, you were nothing. So it's very hard to tell who this is. Uh, I think the most popular theory right now is that this is the voice of Glitchtrap. Talking to Vanessa, explaining how he found her and how much better she is now that he, now that she is under his grasp. Trying to prove to her probably that uh, the state that she is in now, you know, being underneath Glitchtrap, being his reluctant follower, is much better than whatever life that she was living before. You are small. Are you ready? Yeah, so let me just say the detail on this mask is goddamn beautiful. And that's just more uh, backstory about how Vanny encountered Glitchtrap, encountered William Afton, taking her under his, under his lead, I guess, and again, her becoming a reluctant follower to Glitchtrap, trying to bring him back. By the way, uh, that little section right there of zo zooming into the mask is a reference to FNAF World. Again, there's a lot of references below a music box. Uh, I'll be going those a bit later on in the video. So here we get a shot of Vanny in a corridor doing a little dance. You can see she's emerging from a door, and there's another door right here. And it's a mix of gameplay and cinematics that are shown in this trailer. We already knew that, and I'll be pointing them out as we go along. So a later shot in the trailer, uh, we do see this same hallway, I believe, in a uh, security camera. We'll get to it in a little bit, the little wristwatch that Gregory has. However, it appears that there's no static, so I doubt that this is on the camera, but we do see, again, Vanny coming through this corridor, dancing along. It's not the exact same dance that Glitchtrap did in Curse of Dreadbear and at the ending of Main Game Help Wanted, but it is a very similar, you know, aesthetic that she's giving off. And then, here's Vanessa. Alright, I'll talk about the model. I actually do not find it to be that bad. I know a lot of people are upset, they don't really like how she looks. I personally don't think she looks that bad. You gotta keep in mind that this is basically the first human model we've ever had for FNAF. And I think they did a pretty good job. I think the main feature people are upset about is the face. I think people are complaining a bit about the big eyes, which, I mean, they do look a bit weird, but I don't, I, I don't think she looks that bad as people are making her out to be. And her eyes aren't the only big thing that she has. Haha, <laughs> badoom ching. But yeah, we're going down an elevator, it seems like, and we are passing Vanessa on the way down. Her expression appears to be a bit worried. Doesn't seem like she wants us going down wherever we are going to. Also, I'm guessing we play as Gregory throughout this entire game, and I'll get to that in a little bit. In the background, we can see some toys of what appears to be either the sun or moon animatronic. And as we'll see later on, we do have tickets, so maybe this is some sort of prize area where we can redeem the tickets that we collect and we can get some prizes, some collectibles in the game. So yeah, we are passing by Vanessa, going down into somewhere. And then we get another shot of the laser tag area. We have seen this area before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But again, as you can see, we have a giant cutout of Glamrock Freddy and Montgomery Gator. It seems like they have a relaxing place right here. This is where you'd go in. Looks like this is the disco ball, some seating areas, some benches. So maybe this is a place for people to look over people playing laser tag. I also really hope 
that we get to play laser tag. As we'll see later on, there's also a raceway, so I hope at the very least there's some extra mini games that we can play, such as laser tag and go karting, if we don't play them in the main game. We see this ball swinging by. We saw that in one of the earlier uh, teaser trailers. It might have been the tech demo, or it might have been the first teaser we ever got. And then we get a shot of what is most likely the main entrance to the establishment. As you can see, we have some big old doors right here, and right here, and a giant logo. Vanessa skipping past. It appears that she's doing the same dance as the one we saw her doing in an earlier shot. And it says Freddy Faz Bears Pizza Plex, which as we all know, is the name of this establishment. I call it an establishment. We all know it's a mall, a giant mega plex of stores and attractions and stuff like that. Fanny skipping past. And this happens every single time text appears on screen, but you can see Vanny in the background. These are her whiskers, her teeth, her eyes right here, the outline of her head, and her ears. Also, can I just say, I think, I'm, I'm so glad that this feels like a Scott Cawthon trailer. If you don't know what I mean by that, basically, OG trailers for FNAF always had some text appear in front of like a black background, and, dude, I just love that they took the Scott Cawthon trailer approach. Everything about this trailer is just god dang amazing, and I love that they threw in little touches like this. And again, there's lots of references, which I'll go on and explain later in the video. So it says, when fear takes hold... And then we get a shot of Roxanne Wolf. Looking a little bit different from the promotional art we've gotten through calendars and posters. Seems like her crop top is uh, showing a bit more skin, which makes me kind of weird to say. <laughs> so yeah, little extra details that they threw in there, which does make me believe that maybe they're still working on the character designs. I know, again, much like Vanny, uh, Vanessa's model, some people are upset about the look of the Glamrock characters. I really like them. I personally have nothing against them. I, I think they look amazing. But based off the tiny detail here of the missing of the crop top, maybe they're still working on character designs. I don't know. We're just gonna have to wait and see if anything else changes. Also, interesting to note that she has red eyes. Hmm, remember that theory that uh, if they have white eyes, they're good. If they have red eyes, they're bad. Every single character in this, like, 20 second shot has, has red eyes. So... That's interesting. Yeah, again, that's Blower's music box. I'll go over it in more detail a bit later on. You can see another shot of Vanny. Her eye, her nose, her ears are right here. Head shape, and reality fails. This is an interesting line right here, because as we all know, we first saw Vanny in Help Wanted, which is a virtual reality game set in the FNAF universe, where everything is giant meta, basically. The FNAF games exist inside of the FNAF universe, so this reality ward right here is very interesting to note. And then we get a shot of Montgomery Gator. Again, I really love the models for these guys. I think, I think they look amazing. And again, he's got red eyes. Is he evil right now? We don't know. The stage is set. Kind of a basic line, uh, you know, animatronics on stage. Here's Vanny again, I think. Is she here? It's hard to tell. I don't know if, like, this is her head, those are her ears. I don't know. I actually can't really see her. And here's Glamrock Chica. Um, I'm not seeing any major differences. Yeah, everything looks to be about the same. I'm noticing right here on the poster, this is blue, but it's purple on the in-game model. So again, another small change right there. And of course, she's getting red eyes. So she too is evil right now if that theory still stands. Here's Vanny again. This is probably the clearest shot of her. I don't even have to point her out. Ears, head, eyes, nose, whiskers, her arm is going back here, and insanity prevails. Of course, we all know Vanny is going insane because Glitch Trap is taking over her, basically getting inside of her head, trying to control her actions. And here's that awesome shot of all the characters. This is by far my favorite shot in the entire goddamn trailer. And as you can see, 
Freddy, we didn't get to see a close-up shot of him, but he also has red eyes. So maybe this is near the end of the game where Glitchtrap is taking over every single character, he's corrupted every single one of them, and they are awakening, trying to come after us. But then again, later on in the trailer, Roxanne does chase after us, so who knows, maybe this is at the beginning, and maybe they're evil the whole time. But another thing I want to bring up is just how larger Freddy is compared to the other characters. You know, Chica and Roxanne are pretty thin, Montgomery is probably the second largest, but compared to Freddy, these guys are puny. And as we know from the statue, Gregory at one point is going to be hiding inside of Freddy, inside his little chest cavity right here. So yeah, that is another interesting thing to note. It doesn't seem like we are going to be able to hide inside anybody else. Maybe Monty, because again, he's the only other large animatronic, but Freddy's freaking huge, dude. He's bulky. And as you can see, they're going up. They are on a raising platform. A rising platform, it seems like. Is this the stage that we saw in the original trailer? Do they come up from underneath the ground? It does seem like there was a underground port of the place because we see, like, pipes and we are in some sort of, like, underground pathway. I'm bad at explaining it, so I'll just... This, this part right here. It seems like this is underground. So... We do know that there was a underground port of the the mall, so are they coming up from that area? I don't know. And here's Gregory, our first really good shot of him besides the the statue. He looks basically the same, except uh, his hair looks a bit more blonde. On the statue, I believe it was brown, so I don't know if that was an error on Funko's part or if they just changed his hair color. He does have a striped shirt. People are thinking that he is the crying child from FNAF 4. I don't know about that one. Um, I mean, the crying child's long gone at this point in the timeline, so I don't know how I feel about that theory. But as we can see, there's a whole bunch of monitors and control panels, and even like two chairs. So this is a control area, a control module. There's a phone right here. It looks something out of like NASA, but like this is for a mall. This is pretty advanced for a mall. We saw this area actually in Vanny's teaser and maybe even the Help Wanted trailer where Freddy's looking at all of the monitors and then he turns around. And as you can see, Gregory is holding a flashlight and he has a wrist watch. Both of those things we'll talk about in a little bit. Gregory, we can get you out of here. You and me together. So I think it's pretty clear that that is supposed to be Vanessa talking to Gregory, trying to make him go to her so they can both escape. Some people are saying that the line is weird here. Gregory, we can get you out of here. You and me together. You and me together? Like just them? Well, it's kind of an odd line. Also, there's so many monitors. I don't think it's that weird of a line. Um, It makes sense, right? If you're trying to get a small child to come with you, you want them to think you're trustworthy. And also, like, he's scared. He wants to go home. And we heard in the tech demo teaser trailer that Vanny's like, we'll get you home, back to your bed, or whatever she says. Um, and Vanessa's doing the same thing here. Get you out of here. You and me together. We'll get you out of here. You and me together. We, we will both escape. I also want to escape. Therefore, you should trust me. You and me together. Also, together? That's a duo pair? We're gonna, we're gonna hear a reference to two people earlier in the trailer, so keep note of Gregory and Vanessa. And here, oh my god, dude, this, this shot is absolutely incredible. This is Monty's golf course. Again, another minigame I hope we get to have. Golf course, laser tag, go-karting. I hope we can do all of those in the game. Maybe not the main game, there may be like an extras menu or like bonus content but I hope we can mess around in here. So yeah, you can see all the greens, all the holes. Uh, I can't tell exactly what number that is. 14? Okay, so there's 14, so there's probably, uh, what, 18 holes? Which makes sense, 18 holes is kinda like uh, the second, usually there's like nine, and then it goes 18. So yeah, this is gonna be a huge golf course. It makes sense, this is a huge location. It also looks like the theme of the golf course is jungle or rainforest. You can see a seating area right here. There's a hole right there. I'll go back as a whole and also Monty that's his name right there Monty's golf course and here he is except that's not necessarily Montgomery it's hard to make out but that is not an actual animatronic that is a projection or a hologram it's probably more of a hologram actually but oh my gosh also can we talk about his animation okay. hold up 
slapping his his little bass guitar there. Oh, dude, I, I love the animations. So yeah, I think maybe at one point we'll get tricked into thinking, okay, we're looking at our camera, we see an animatronic is where they should be, except it's not them, it's a hologram. Uh-oh, Montgomery is chasing behind me. I feel like that's probably what's gonna happen at one point. Why else would they have holograms? There are a lot of locations that these characters need to be in. As we'll see in a little bit, they have their own like dedicated booths. Right here, right? Montgomery's booth right there. Chica's booth right there. Roxanne's. Freddy's. So if Monty needs to be in here, but also at the golf course, yeah, they're gonna need more animatronics or they'll just have some holograms. So this, sh this shot is so fascinating to me because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So down here's the booths, it seems like, right? That's Chica's booth way off in the distance. And we can see the Foxy ship from the Pirate Ride minigame in Cursed Dreadbear makes a return. So technically, Foxy's in the game, boys. Let's get it. It seems like either these are giant TV screens right here. You can see TVs right here. Or it's a observation deck where maybe like staff can overlook people walking around in the area. But yeah, that's either a giant TV or a observation area. A giant golden Roxanne statue. Every single character has a giant golden statue. You can tell also by the way that these red objects are moving that they are curtains. See how they kind of like wave in the, in the air. Also, we're hiding from Vanessa. Why would we be doing that? And you can tell we're playing as Gregory because of our height, right? We're about waist length. Length? Height. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah, why are we hiding from Vanessa if she's trying to help us? Maybe, and this is going back to that theory, that Vanny and Vanessa are the same character. Either that, or this is the beginning of the game where we are hiding from everybody, and then the night guard finds us and we're like, oh, hey kid, we need to get you out of here. Those are the two possibilities in my mind. But yeah, why would we be hiding from the person that's trying to get us out of here, right? Here, you and me together. Why would we be doing that? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You can see, she's looking around the establishment. Trying to find us with the flashlight. Could be the same flashlight that Mon- uh, not Montgomery. Gregory has. Maybe she gives us a flashlight. Maybe we find a flashlight. I don't know. Also, she's got a ponytail. I know this is nitpicking, but like, I don't think her hair has been consistent at least once. It's always different in every single thing that we see Vanessa in. Teasers, posters, calendars, the in-game trailer, like, <laughs> stay consistent. The coloring book? What's going on with your hair? Just realized this is not in 1080p. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they won't stop hunting you. None of them will stop hunting you. So this is, once again, that underground area I was talking about a little bit ago. And Vanessa says they won't stop hunting you. None of them will stop hunting you. They won't stop hunting you. None of them will stop hunting you. And it seems like we're also hearing a scream. Do you hear that? Won't stop hunting you. That? Right there? They won't stop hunting you. Right. So, they won't stop hunting you. They, multiple characters. Maybe, again, all the animatronics are coming after us. Or maybe she's talking about uh, just a few characters and Vanny. I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard to tell at this point. But yeah, we're in this underground area. Kind of like a sewer system, it seems like. Um, I don't know where this would be besides just underground, but why would they have this in a mall? We'll stop hunting you. Also, the way that Gregory moves, and again, you can tell with Gregory based off the height, we're kind of just a bit taller than these rails right here. It's kind of like he's always in the middle of wherever he's walking. We'll stop hunting you. You can see? So, I don't know if this is a cutscene. I don't know. I hope that this is us walking because as we'll see in a little bit, this is all free roam, which is, I'm so hyped about, dude. We've waited so long for a free roam game. So here we get a shot of the play area. Now, a lot of people are saying that this looks unfinished. I, I don't think it looks that bad. And we get a better shot of this area in a little bit right here. Yeah, a lot of people are upset about the trailer, thinking that it, it looks unfinished, which, I don't know. I, I, I see it, but at the same time, I don't like this. This is fine to me, right? And we see it in a little bit too when we see the moon jester. Free me! Like, this looks pretty good. To be fair, a lot of open area to walk around. Maybe that's what people are talking about. There's a lot of open area to walk around, but I don't know. It, it looks fine to me, in my opinion. So yeah, uh, we are Gregory once again going into a play area with a flashlight. 
that was maybe given to us by Vanessa, and we will see in this exact same area, there's a slide that goes into a ball pit, and also the moon animatronic is here as well. It doesn't seem like we're in a hurry, uh, which is interesting, so maybe we're just like walking around casually. We're not being chased at this point. And then, <sighs> dude, this is, again, one of my favorite shots, okay? So these are the booths that all the characters are in. Again, you can see Montgomery has a golden statue here. Uh, this looks like Chica's statue, and I can't tell who that is. Maybe Roxanne, because again, over this way is this area. As you can see, it has the same music notes, golden statues, and that is Chica's booth right over there. So this is, this is the other side of this area right over there. But something that's weird is that there are these props, right? Glamrock Chica's guitar, Carl the Cupcake, Mr. Cupcake from FNAF 1, inside these glass containers. And there's something else down there which we can't really make out. I- it looks like another guitar. Why are these in here? Is this a museum? For FNAF history? Because Glamrock Chica's guitar- okay, sure, I- I'll, you know, look past that. But FNAF 1 Cupcake? Why would that be here? It seems like we are, we're, we're gonna have a collection of items, maybe even characters, from past events and past games in Security Breach. Maybe this is also some sort of museum area in the mall. I think that'd be really cool to see. And again, remember, we might see some FNAF 1 characters or just other characters from past games. Keep that idea in your head. Um, for a little bit. So yeah, Freddy Fazbear has a booth down there, Roxanne Wolf, Montgomery Gator, and Chica Chicken. Also, right up here, there is a vent. You can kind of see it. There's a vent right there. That's not the only time we see a vent. So, maybe Gregory, we, or the animatronics are at one point going to go into the ventilation systems. Looks like there's a fan in there too. Hmm, interesting. So here is Glamrock Chica. And as you can see, another vent. Maybe at one point we're going to be in the vent, look down and see Chica performing, or we're gonna look down and she's not gonna be there. We have the artwork of Chica, a door right here, probably some back area, backstage area, and a security door. Hmm, why would that be there? Another vent? Why are there two vents in the same area? Huh? Ports and uh, Chica's face on the floor, uh, sofa, table, arcade machine, a place where she can glam herself up, Glamrock Chica. And also, again, her animation. I really like the animation. We have to get you out by morning. Just rocking out. We have to get you out by morning. So, Vanessa says we have to get you out by morning. And as we'll see in a little bit, uh, right here on the watch, we do have a time. And it has minutes. 12 a.m. Are we gonna have to survive until 6 a.m. again? Yeah, you can see a bit of um, some area right here. It looks like it's blocked off. So, I don't know what that is. Some rooms in between their booths, it seems like. You can see Monty's art right there, a little bit of Roxanne's room right there. We'll see that in a little bit. Well, by morning. Then we go down the slide that we saw um, in the play area right here. And we go into the pit! You can see a Freddy plushie from Help Wanted right there. And just a better shot of the entire play area. And it is massive! Look at all of the equipment in here. Yeah, so we have a nice little animation of the balls bouncing when we go into the pit. Into the pit. And then we're in a kitchen, hiding from Chica. However, her eyes are not red. Hmm. So are they, again, maybe some characters are always evil, no matter if their eyes are red or not. Now, when I say I like the animations, I, I like some of the animations right here. We'll do it. I don't think it looks terrible, but I don't know, it just seems so emotionless, you know? We'll do it. The the physics are great, of the earrings and the hair bobbing, we'll do it. bobbing up and down as she walks. I love that, but I don't know, like there's no emotion. We'll so yeah, we are hiding in the kitchen from Chica. We'll do it. Maybe she's hunting us down, I don't know. And we hear someone in the background say, you will do as I say. You will do as I say. And as you can see, we are now hiding from Montgomery in his rainforest slash jungle golf course in another pit. We'll do as I say. You will bring. And I talked about this shot earlier. I really love this area. Roxanne, 
uh, a nice cutout of Glamrock Chica. However, it's the laser tag cutout, but this is not the laser tag area. I don't know if that's a oversight on Steel Wolf's port, but that's interesting. Glamrock Freddy up there, and a little playhouse, big slide. Also, I want to talk about this area. Notice how the clouds are coming down and the stars are going up, and there's no other clouds. Only stars. So, here's what I'm guessing, and we see this a little bit uh, later on with the sun animatronic. As you can see, the same stars, except they're not light, they're not lit up anymore. It's the same area, except it's bright, and the sun animatronic is out. So I'm guessing this area has two modes, I guess you could say. Night mode and day mode. In night mode, maybe we only encounter the moon man, the moon animatronic. And in daytime, maybe we'll only see the sun. Freaky. It's interesting. You know, right there. Right there. Also, the moon and the stars orbiting around this little castle, this tower right here. Maybe someone will appear right there. Maybe the moon, maybe the sun. And here we get a shot of Roxanne's area. You can see she left her keytar here, and she's not there. Where did she go? Oh! She's chasing after us! Also, kind of weird that Freddy's head, his light is over there, when his booth is out this way. Yeah, you can see inside Monty's area. You can see more of inside these areas. I don't know why. So it seems like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. The doors that are on this wall lead into these big open rooms, right? So that's Chica's booth, a party room for Chica. Monty's booth, Montgomery's party room, because you can see they're blocked off, yet it still has Montgomery's art on the side. Also, the booths look kind of exactly the same, right? A glam up area, a sofa, the head, arcade machine, table. I'm kind of disappointed that they're not, I mean, of course they're, you know, suited for the certain animatronic, right? You got, um, Roxanne art on the, on the floor, and her head up there, all purpley, but other than that, they're kind of the same, which I'm a little disappointed about. Yeah, we're being chased down, you can see a good shot of... That statue right there. There's another case which has something inside, but we don't know, we can't see what it is. So yeah, we're being chased down by Roxanne once again, no red eyes. So again, maybe that aggressive slash friendly mode theory is kind of out the window. This is another animation that I'm not too keen about. I think it looks a bit goofy, if I'm being honest. I mean, look at that. I'm, where's the emotion? What is this? Overall though, I, I'm extremely hyped for the game. I really like the models, I really like most of the animations. By the way, I know there's someone talking in the background, I'm gonna wait till they're done with their whole speech and then I'll talk about it. Here, we can see the watch that Mon- uh, I keep calling it Montgomery, that Gregory has on his wrist. It has cameras, map, inventory, and logs. It has a timer, has a map with cameras, some controls right here, zoom in, zoom out, and then icons down along the bottom. And also a button right here. And maybe another button right here. So cameras, obviously we're gonna be able to watch the cameras. Right here it looks like it says 1 a.m. I think. Though I can't quite make that out. So yeah, it seems like on the cameras tab, we can look through these cameras. We have a map right here of our character. Which is weird because we're not on the map icon. Right? The, the map tab, sorry. So maybe this map is a map of the whole mall. A map of the floor that we're on, I don't know. And this is kind of like a mini map. So yeah, we're looking at this camera highlighted green, and it appears that this is, again, Montgomery's golf course. Inventory, it seems like we're gonna be able to pick up items. I'm guessing we'll have the flashlight in there, and maybe some other items that we pick up along the way, such as keys. We have a flashlight battery, a shocker, maybe, if we're able to shock the animatronics, or that's power for the, for the watch. Danger indicator, I don't know, it has an eight in it. There's eight dangers, I, I have no clue what that means, and two tickets. So again, maybe we're gonna be able to buy some prizes. Oh god, Vanny, what Vanessa, what happened? Oh, Jesus. So before he goes into the watch, you can see, again, we're still inside the pit, inside uh, Monty's golf course. And then we have an animation of us pulling up the watch, and we already talked about all this. Uh, the logs, probably tapes or objectives, I don't know. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be lower. We're once again inside the play area. We come across a bridge, and on the other side is the Moon Man. I love his animation. I absolutely adore his animation. Jumping around, also, this scene. Oh my god, I can't wait to talk about this. So, I feel like we're probably gonna have to say, like, a riddle to pass by, so something, I don't know. He seems like that type of character that's like, hmm, you must answer these riddles three to pass. God, I love this guy right here. Also, Red Eyes, that's the second time 
we've seen the moon animatronic with red eyes. In fact, we've only seen him twice, and both times he's always had red eyes. So now that that guy's done talking, I want to talk about what he's talking about. You will do as I say. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me, then you will. Both of you, burn! So it seems like this guy is talking to two people. Right, he says, bring me what I want, and if you don't, you, you two, will burn. He says, the two of you. So he's talking to two characters, right? And it seems like he's kind of like bossing them around. I don't know who this is. Could be Monty, could be the disappointed boss, I kind of doubt that though. Could be like the bulky beefcake guy, I don't know. You will bring me what I want! <laughs> so, again, he's talking to two people, and they need to bring him something. And if they fail, they're gonna burn. FNAF 3 style. It's hard to tell who he's talking to. Vanny and Vanessa, if they're two separate people. Maybe, again, Vanny, Vanessa has like split personality disorder or something. If he's talking to Vanessa and Gregory, if he's talking to two animatronics, the moon animatronic, the sun animatronic, Monty and Roxanne, Freddy and Chica, I don't know, but he's talking to two people who need to bring him something. Say, you will bring me what I want, and if you- I'm guessing he probably wants Gregory. So, I don't know if he's talking to Gregory and Vanessa. I don't know, man. Maybe he tricked Vanessa and Gregory into trusting him, and he's making them collect everything. Collect uh, certain things, which is why we have an inventory. I don't know. It's fun to theorize. This is another one of my favorite shots. I just, oh my god. Montgomery being an absolute bad butt dude. Bursting down the gate. Look at this! That's awesome. Oh my god, that's awesome. He doesn't have red eyes. Unless they're being blocked out by his glasses, he does not have red eyes. So maybe we're in trouble, he busts open the gate to help us. This area we've seen in the past tech demo, so not really much to talk about. We got the L and we have the pizza icon right there pointing to two separate directions. Now right here, Roxanne also doesn't have red eyes, but clearly she's after us. And we can tell from this keyhole right here that we have locked her inside this area, this bricked red lighted area, wherever this is. And she's trying to bust down the gate, much like Monty right here, to try and get to us. Right, she's banging on the gate trying to get to us. And Chica pushes boxes out of the way to get to us. And right here, there's an icon that has a planet on it. This could be the laser tag area because it seems to be themed around space. Right here, All right? They're wearing space helmets with laser guns from outer space. Also, there's like a giant spinning ball, which could be a planet, but it, it doesn't have rings, but the icon here does. Just pushes them out of the way. God. And then, right here, she sees us. Starts chasing us. Also, here's a shot of Vanny. The same room. Uh, so it is the same room as right here. Except now it's all staticky, so I'm guessing we're looking at a camera. And she's chasing down after the camera that we're watching. Here's the sun animatronic. Um, I'm hoping that this is a placeholder model, because this is the exact same model as the, as the moon guy. The exact same. So, I don't know man, I'm hoping that this is a placeholder. We've seen them in what appears to be like a red dress in a separate trailer, a separate teaser trailer. So, I'm hoping that this is a placeholder, because, I don't know, like, this is the moon's face. Like, this is the moon man, except he's yellow. So I talked about this scene a bit, how it's all light. The stars are not lit up anymore. They've, they've turned off because it's now daytime with the sun animatronic. Here's the slide. This is, dude, okay. <laughs> I want a go-kart against the animatronic, Scott. Also, I love this artwork of Roxanne. I think it looks amazing. Yeah, you got giant TV screens right here, showing off Sodoroni, and something else. I can't quite make out what that is. Another golden statue of Roxanne. You can see a forklift is down here. And if you guys remember, PlayStation did say that we're gonna be able to ride some vehicles. So, maybe forklifts, maybe we're going to race against the animatronics and go-karts, I don't know. There's a pit stop right here, in case we need to make some repairs. But yeah, I, I hope we get to go caught, man. And here's the moon man going down that slide I just mentioned. Except, it's nighttime, and he's the only one out. And in this scene, it's daytime. 
Right? The Moon Man is nowhere to be found, except the Sun animatronic has to be found. Right? So that kind of helps prove the case that when this area is in night mode, it's the Moon animatronic with his red eyes hunting us down, or when it's in daytime mode, it's the Sun animatronic with t giant white eyeballs uh, helping us out, maybe? And then we're gonna shot a Vanny inside a STAFF only area. Caution, staff only, except staff has little dots in between. So it stands for something, maybe, unless we're looking too far into it. There's a big bright red button right here, probably to close some doors. That's what I'm guessing, right? You close this big door right here, it slams on her hand, and then... Security breach. It, it was weird to me that they didn't have FNAF up here. I don't know if they did that just so they could have this little animation. But like, I saw that some people were confused that, you know, people who didn't know what FNAF was, like, wait, I thought this was FNAF. It doesn't say FNAF up here though. So that's a weird choice. I doubt it means anything, but it was just weird to me that they didn't have Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. Also, red sus. There is more going on here than you realize. That's kind of just a basic line. Yeah, of course there is, Vanessa. I don't need to hear you mention it to me. And this is the scene that a lot of people are talking about. As they should be, because this, oh boy, this could mean many different things. Also, 2021, I, I will quickly talk about this. It seems like we might have to wait a bit longer until we get the game. Because this is the gameplay trailer that we were supposed to get in March, but they released it alongside the state of play in late February. So they bumped up the release date for this gameplay trailer. And the gameplay trailer, if it was releasing in March, right? It was originally gonna release in March. And Scott said the game's coming out early 2021. Why would the gameplay trailer that's releasing in March, the third month of the year, not have a release date for a game releasing in early 2021 so i feel like we may have to wait until like summer or something which i'm fine with again i i want this game to be good i want it to be good i'm not highlighting roxanne because i was like oh you gotta change the look i just I, I i hope they keep working on it i hope they make it good i'd rather wait longer and have it be absolutely phenomenal than get it like next month and have it be broken as hell so who's this guy uh, pff, I mean, Willie Mafton, like, who else would it freaking be? <laughs> who else would it be? It could be Glitch Trap's, like, physical form, um, after he's became a plushie, right? He gets a body back, and it's whatever this creature is now. Could it be the giant amalgamation we see at the end of Princess Quest in Help Wanted Mobile Port. Um, spoiler alert for the books, Fazbear Fright, books number six. Uh, skip ahead a little bit if you don't want to be spoiled, okay? Hopefully you've skipped ahead now. Um, apparently at the end of that, the, the Stitch Wraith story, the FNAF 1 gang is like, melted down to be destroyed, but William Afton's soul goes into the melted ports and becomes like a giant 12 foot tall amalgamation of characters. I don't know, I didn't read the story, I know nothing about it, I heard that from Darko, so if I got the story a bit wrong, I'm sorry, but that's kind of like the basic premise. So, could be that creature. But I don't know if Scott would tie in the books to the games. But then again, the Stitch Wraith story is very different from any other story. Because it's a continuation, right? It's always in every single Fazbear Fright books. And it links directly to the games, it seems like, with the character of the Stitch Wraith. So, maybe this character is that amalgamation of the FNAF 1 characters with the soul of William Afton. I don't know. We're just gonna have to wait and see. I don't think it's I don't think it's toxic spring trap. I feel like that would make no sense. Also, the the hand doesn't match scrap trap because scrap trap doesn't have this uh, this arm. Also, why toxic spring trap? Right? I have a post. I do have a poster of toxic spring trap, and he does not have those hands. I'm telling you right now, it's not him. So that is the entire trailer. That took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Sorry, boys, but I really like going in depth with this trailer because I fucking love it. It's probably my favorite trailer. I just love it so much, and I love you so much. So, GD pointed out on Twitter that some of the quotes spoken by that 
ominous character who's like, you will bring me what I want. Or direct quotes from the book of the fourth closet that is spoken by William Afton. Hey, I'm too lazy to put up my green screen. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, so this is the Twitter video. Big thanks to GD for this, link down in the description. Pathetic, but now. As you can see, it says their lives will now have a greater purpose, the man said contently. They will become more just like you did. You are more. Are you ready? It says you are more. So yeah, uh, another scene right here with the, the character that's being weird champ. You will bring me what I want. You will. Do as I say. Elizabeth, he snapped. Do as I say. The animatronic girl stopped moving at once, looking startled. Do as I say. You will bring me. He gave the woman a sharp look. You will bring it to me. Say. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me. Pathetic. You will burn. Uh, because it wouldn't be a FNAF game if nothing burned. Also, a person by the name of Judy, again, over on Twitter, link down below, put a compilation of all of the musical references and also uh, visual references from past FNAF games that this trailer had, which, again, makes me appreciate it so much more. So this video is about all the music references. When I first found you, you were nothing. So it sounds kind of close to the main menu music of Ultimate Custom Night. When I first found you, you were nothing. Yeah, I can hear that. Did you hear that? That little heartbeat right there. Bum bum. But now. We hear a heartbeat, or it could also be the music, uh, Nowhere to Run from Pizza Sim, which also sounds like a heartbeat. But now. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what everyone else was freaking out about. Baloa's music box. They have a remix of Crumbling Dreams in the trailer. That is amazing. Dude, I love Crumbling Dreams. Gregory, we can get you out of here. <sighs> Dude, that's awesome. And then when Vanessa is talking to Gregory when he's in front of all the monitors, it kind of sounds like the Watcher Gregory, 6. Gregory, we can get you out of here. Dun, 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 dun. And the next scene has music from the FNAF 2 trailer. It's, it kind of sounds like that, uh, at least. I can't include it though, because the FNAF 2 trailer music is copyrighted, and I'd rather not get a copyright claim, but I'll play the Security Breach trailer. So yeah, if you go watch the FNAF 2 trailer, it kind of sounds like that music that it has, but again, I, I can't play it. And then you can kind of hear that dun, 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 dun. Which is, of course, the Toro March. Kind of a staple in FNAF at this point. And Judy also has a video for all of the visual references in the trailer. I talked about some of them, like the FNAF 4 trailer, right? This is the first one, I believe. Yep. Man, I remember that trailer. I missed that game. Bonnie in the corridor? Maybe. Yeah, dude, the, the classic Scott Cawthon text. I love that they brought that back. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Uh, it's also a, re a reference to Vinny's teaser, which is in front of all of the monitors, but Freddy Walks too. <laughs> okay, th this is kind of a stretch. But yeah, just any animatronic peeking out from behind a door, into a door, from a door frame, yeah. And yeah, I, I noticed this too. It's kind of similar to the uh, title reveal for the FNAF 4 trailer, but uh, not that similar. It's more of a twist, right? When FNAF 4 is waking up from the bed. Hashtag dream theory forever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, those are most of the references. Is there another one? Yeah, it just shows how faithful. Yeah, and I love Steel Wolf for that. And finally, I will finish off the video, this very long video, with a article that was released by PlayStation by the CEO and founder, the co-founder of Steelwall Studios. They made a post over on the PlayStation blog that I'm going to share right now. They also have a brand new screenshot of the kind of main area of the mall, uh, what I'm guessing to be the entrance. It says, we know that you have all been waiting patiently, mostly, for more news on the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. So today, we're incredibly excited to unveil the first 
gameplay trailer in Sony State of Play, the first gameplay trailer. Hmm, maybe we're gonna have more in the future. We'll get to that in a little bit. Since its launch in 2014, Five Nights at Freddy's has grown at an exponential rate, gaining a unique following as a horrific cult classic. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is no longer limited to small pizzerias as they have now opened the Mega Pizzaplex in FNAF Security Breach. Security Breach is by far the most ambitious FNAF game yet. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach has been a massive undertaking. The Mega Pizzaplex is enormous. I'm pretty sure they said it's like three stories or something. What you're about to see is barely scratching the surface of the horror that you will experience when you step out of the security office and explore the darkened hallways, arcades, and Fazbear attractions. So I'm guessing if they are literally saying step out of the office, right, because it's a free room game, maybe that place with all of the monitors is the security office? Don't worry, this won't be the last you'll hear from us, and we still have a few more tricks up our sleeves. But you'll just have to wait and see what we have in store. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy a few scares. No, I'm just kidding, that is a reference to Help Wanted though. But yeah, grab a slice of pizza. So it seems like we have a bit more waiting to do, which I'm fine with. Again, I'm perfectly fine with that. As long as we keep getting things, teasers, trailers, they don't even have to be gameplay, just anything, I'm fine with waiting. So yeah, that's basically it. If I, if I missed anything, I would be shocked because I've been recording for over an hour. Yeah, I'm sure I've missed something, but let me know in the comments down below all your theories. Who's the guy at the end, or gal? Who is Security Girl? Is she Vanny? Is she a separate character? Who's the bad guys? Who are the good guys? I don't know. <laughs> it's so... I'm glad that we have a lot of questions that we don't know because it, it leaves room for so much speculation before the game's release, and I'm so, so excited. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side. Goodbye.